Hey, it's Eve for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the Crimson Cardigan. So the first thing you'll need for this project is the written pattern. So if you'd like to view the free version of the written pattern, you can do so by clicking the first link in the description box down below. Or you can grab the ad-free printable PDF version of the pattern in my shop by visiting the second link in the description box down below. So first off, you'll need to choose a size. This pattern comes in nine different sizes from a women's extra small to a 5X. And you'll need to measure the wearer of the cardigan to determine which size they're going to need. And then once you know which size you're making, then you can get your supplies ready because of course, different sizes of the pattern will call for different amounts of yarn, different numbers of buttons, etc. So for the yarn, I'm using Lion Brand Touch of Alpaca, and this is a mostly acrylic yarn with a little bit of alpaca blended into it. This is very soft and smooth. And this colorway is called Crimson, and I have the bonus bundle skeins here. I have actually more than what I have on the table right now. But I have the bonus bundle skeins that are jumbo skeins. These are 200 gram skeins. So, of course, you'll need to check the written pattern to see how much yarn you're going to need for the size you're making. But this is the yarn that I'm going to be using. You'll also need a crochet hook, and I'm using a size I or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook for this. This one right here is a Furls Streamline Swirl, and it is made of resin, so it's pretty smooth and slick. And you'll always want to keep in mind that the hook size given in a pattern is a suggestion only. You want to make sure you're using the hook size that will give you the correct gauge for the pattern with your personal tension. So definitely check your gauge before you officially decide what size hook you're going to use. Don't just use a five and a half millimeter because that's what I used. You need to make sure that you use the hook that will give you the correct gauge with your personal tension. But this is the hook that I'm going to be using. You'll also need some buttons. Now I have some wooden buttons here and these are one and one eighth inches in diameter. And you'll want to use buttons that are about the same size. I would not recommend going above one and a quarter or below one inch as far as your button size. But for the size that I'm making, I need five buttons. You'll also need a measuring tape. This one is from Knitter's Pride. And you'll be using this to check your gauge, to measure your finished pieces, and to measure the wearer of the cardigan before you choose a size. I also have some scissors here. These are the rainbow folding scissors, also from Knitter's Pride. And some yarn needles or blunt tapestry needles. These are the Clover Chibi needles. I really like these because they have a bent tip, but that's just my preference. You can use whatever type of yarn needle you have. So now that we have all our supplies together, now we can start crocheting. So we're going to be starting our crochet at the back neck area, the back and sides of the neck, because this cardigan is actually worked from the top down from the neck with a raglan shaping style. So this cardigan could be done by a confident beginner who is familiar with some of the different techniques that we're using here and is comfortable reading the fabric, um, able to count their stitches well. So the skill level is, I'm marking it as kind of intermediate because this is for a crocheter who is familiar enough with the crochet fabric to understand where they're putting stitches, where the edge stitches go, you know, how to work into the edge of the fabric to work in edging, things like that. And you also need to be familiar with increases and decreases. So this is not an overly complicated pattern, but you do need to be comfortable with some of the commonly used techniques in crochet that would normally be used in a raglan style project. So like I said, we're going to be starting around the sides and back of the neck with our foundation edge, and then we're going to do some raglan shaping to create the area for the sleeves and for the body of the cardigan. And then we're going to move on and work the rest of the body of the cardigan. And then we will add the rest of the length of the sleeves later. And we'll finish it off with some ribbing around the edges. So let's start at the back neck edge or the back and side neck edge. 
And I'm going to be using a foundation single crochet for this. I strongly recommend using the foundation single crochet because it does create an edge that is a lot stretchier and more pliable than a regular foundation chain. If you can work a regular single crochet with a little bit of an extra step in there, then this is not going to be a super difficult technique. It's just a slight modification of a regular single crochet. So a foundation single crochet works the equivalent of a foundation chain and the first row of single crochet at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and chain two and then I'm going to insert my hook into the second chain from the hook, yarn over pull up one loop. So at this point it's just like a regular single crochet but first, before we yarn over pull through two loops, we're going to yarn over pull through one loop, which makes the chain part underneath the single crochet, and yarn over pull through two loops. So now you can kind of see there that we have a chain underneath and a single crochet on top. So now for all the following stitches, I'm going to turn it so that right here is the top edge of my work. I'm going to turn it so the bottom edge of the work is facing up and insert my hook into the two strands that are across the bottom of the previous stitch. Now I'm going to yarn over pull up a loop, yarn over pull through one loop, and then yarn over pull through two loops. And that has created my second foundation single crochet. So after the first foundation single crochet, for the size that I'm making, I need to work 49 more. So I just worked the first one and then one more after that, so I'm going for a total of 50 foundation single crochet. And if you're not super familiar with this technique already, I have a video demonstrating this in more detail that I will link in the description box down below. But I'm just going to work the total number of foundation single crochet that the pattern calls for, for the size that I'm making. And by the way, I am making the extra small. So if you're making any of the other sizes, you will definitely need to go reference the written pattern to follow the numbers for whatever size you're making. All right, there's my 50th total foundation single crochet. And you can see how stretchy this is compared to a regular foundation chain. A regular foundation chain would never stretch this much. So this is going to be much more comfortable around the neck for one thing. But it's also going to make it a lot easier to work into when we work our edging around the fronts and the neck edge of the cardigan because the bottom edge of this row looks and feels pretty much just like the top of a row of regular stitches. So it's a lot easier to work into that foundation edge if you've used the foundation single crochet to start out your work. All right, so now we're ready to move on to row one. And this is the beginning of our raglan shaping. So raglan shaping is a lot like working a granny square where you're going to be working extra stitches in the corners to make the piece get larger. But for this, we're going to be working extra stitches where the back section of the cardigan meets the sleeve on both sides and where the sleeve is going to meet the front edges. But right now we don't have any front edges because this cardigan has a V-neck. So it's kind of shaped like this so far. Here's our back neck edge, here's our side neck edges where the sleeves will extend from. And then we're going to be adding stitches along both of these edges right here as we go along to bring this down to a v-neck. So for row one, I'm going to chain two and turn the work. And the chain two at the beginning of the row does not count as a stitch in this pattern. So I'm going to work a half double crochet, chain one and half double crochet, all in that very same stitch that the chain was coming from. And now we're going to repeat a little sequence across not all the way across, but across a certain portion of this. So I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch, and then half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch, and I'm going to repeat that three more times. So half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, that was one time, one more time, back loop, front loop, back loop, 
front loop. And if you are not super familiar with working into the back and the front loop, I do have a video on that as well, which I will link down below. But this pattern also does have quite a few sections where you have to repeat a whole string of instructions. So that's kind of why I'm considering it a more intermediate level pattern because it does require some experience pattern reading. So now that I've finished repeating that little sequence three more times, I'm going to work a half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet all into the next stitch. And each of these chain one spaces is going to be what makes the corners of our piece for our raglan shaping. So now I'm going to repeat that sequence of half double crochet in the back loop only, and then half double crochet in the front loop only across until I have 10 stitches left in my row. So I'm going to keep going, half double crochet in the back loop, half double crochet in the front loop, half double crochet in the back loop, half double crochet in the front loop, and I'm going to continue doing that all the way across till I have 10 stitches left. All right, I have 10 stitches left, so I'm going to work that half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the next stitch. And then I'm going to repeat the half double crochet in the back loop only, and then half double crochet in the front loop only. I'm going to repeat that until I have one stitch left. All right, there's my last stitch, and I'm going to half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in that last stitch. So that's the end of row one, and if we kind of lay this down here, then if I get my tail out of the way, you can see where that we've got our back section here and then our two sleeve portions here. So we're going to start increasing on the next rows to add the extra stitches for the fronts of the cardigan to make that v-neck. All right, so let's work row two. For row two, I'm going to chain two and turn the work. I'm going to work two half double crochet in the same stitch my chain is coming from. And then the thing directly after that first stitch that I just worked into is a chain space. So I'm going to half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in that chain space. And on this row, our sequence is to half double crochet in the front loop only, and then half double crochet in the back loop only. So we're going to repeat that sequence till we get to the next chain one space. So half double crochet in the front loop, half double crochet in the back loop, half double crochet in the front loop, half double crochet in the back loop, and we are almost to this corner chain space here. So it's right over here. There's that last half double crochet before the chain space, and I'm going to half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in that corner chain space. So for that string of instructions, the pattern tells me to work that three times. I've already done it once, so I'm going to do it two more times. So I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop and then half double crochet in the back loop and repeat that little sequence across till I get to the next corner chain space and then work half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in that corner chain space. So I'm going to do that two more times for a total of three times and then we'll finish out the row. All right, so I'm up to that last corner chain space. I'm gonna half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the corner chain space. And I've got one stitch left in my row, so I'm gonna work two half double crochet in that last stitch. And that is the end of row two. You can see how we have made it one row thicker now as far as our section that we have so far. So let's work row three. For row three, we're going to chain two and turn. We're going to work two half double crochet in the same stitch the chain is coming from. Then we're going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch, half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch, and then here's our chain space. We're going to half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in that chain space. And now we're going to begin our string of instructions that's going to get repeated. So I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch, half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch, and repeat that little stitch pattern until we get to the next chain one space. So back loop only, front loop only, back loop only, front loop only, until we get to the next corner chain space, which is right over here, 
next to my hand. And when we get to that corner chain space, we're going to half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the corner chain space. So that string of instructions is to be worked three times. I've already done it once. So again, I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop, half double crochet in the front loop, half double crochet in the back loop, half double crochet in the front loop, all the way to the next chain one space. And then I'll work a half double crochet chain one, half double crochet in that next chain space. So I'm going to continue working that set of instructions till I've done it three times total, including this first time over here. And as you're going through this pattern, you'll want to keep in mind that the stitch pattern we're using here is very simple to work, but it creates kind of a waffle style texture to the fabric. And what we're doing is for the stitches that recede as far as the row that's facing us, the stitches that recede, we work into the back loop of those stitches and the stitches that pop forward, we work into the front loop of those. So of course you want to go by the instructions as far as determining which loop you're supposed to work into um, on the row that you're on. But just keep in mind that if for some reason you end up at a point where in your sequence you end up working a back loop only half double crochet into one of these stitches from the previous row that's popping forward, or if you work a front loop half double crochet into one of the stitches that recedes, chances are your stitch count has a, an error or a mistake in it somewhere. So you'll want to keep that in mind as you're working this stitch pattern. You'll always want to work the front loop only half double crochets into the stitches that pop forward and the back loop only half double crochets into the stitches that recede to the back. All right, so I finished repeating that sequence. And now what I'm going to do to finish off the row is I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch, half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch, and then work two half double crochet in the very last stitch of the row. So that is the end of row three. So let's work row four. For row four, we're going to chain two and turn the work. And we're going to work two half double crochet in the same stitch that our chain was coming from. And then we're going to half double crochet in the front loop, half double crochet in the back loop, and repeat that stitch pattern across to the next chain space, which is right here. Then we're going to half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the chain space. So now we're going to repeat those instructions again and again. And again, those instructions are to half double crochet in the front loop only, half double crochet in the back loop only, and repeat that across to the next chain space. Then half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the chain space. And we're doing that a total of four times. So I've already done it once. I'm going to do that three more times till I have reached this final chain space of the row. And then I'll show you how we're going to end the row. All right, so I am down to that last corner chain space. I've just worked into that. There's my corner right here. And now we're gonna repeat our sequence of half double crochet in the front loop, half double crochet in the back loop, across to the last stitch. And work two half double crochet in the last stitch. So that's the end of row four. So row five is very similar, except that we're reversing the back loop only and front loop only in the half double crochet stitch pattern. So we're going to chain two and turn two half double crochet in the same stitch that our chain was coming from. Then we're going to half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, and that is our sequence that we're going to repeat across to the next chain one space. And here's our chain one space. We're going to half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in that space. And I'm going to repeat that all the way across till we've worked into each chain space. So again, half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only. Repeat that little stitch pattern across to the chain space. Half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the chain space and repeat that again and again till we've worked into that very last chain space of the row.
All right, so there's that last chain space that I've just worked into. Now we're going to half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, till we get to the last stitch. And then we're gonna work two half double crochet in that last stitch. So that is the end of row five. And we're now going to be repeating rows four and five to continue our raglan shaping. So you can kind of see how that the increases that we're doing on the ends of our rows here is starting to add stitches to the fronts of our cardigan. So for the size that I'm making, which is the extra small, I'm gonna repeat rows four to five four more times and then repeat row four once more. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what it looks like and we'll move on to row six and seven. All right, so I finished repeating rows four and five, and then I've finished with row four. And this is what our piece looks like at this point. Now, it kind of looks like a weird shape, but this section right here is the back of the cardigan. This section is the sleeve, and here's the sleeve on the other side, and then these two areas are the fronts. So when we fold the front sections down, like so, then it looks a little bit more like a cardigan. So here's the back neck edge, here's a front on one side and a front on the other side, and then here's what's going to be the sleeve openings. So in rows six and seven, what we're gonna be doing is we're continuing to add increases at the corners to make this raglan section a little bit bigger, but we don't want to add any more stitches to the front neck edge because then if we just keep adding stitches then they're going to overlap. And we're going to leave a gap here because we're going to add an edging where the button band will be right here where we're going to have our row of buttons down the front of the cardigan. So what we're going to do is add stitches only at the chain spaces but not on the beginnings and ends of the rows. So for row six, I'm going to chain two and turn. I'm going to half double crochet in the same stitch, but only one half double crochet instead of two like we've been doing. Then we're going to have our little stitch pattern of half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only. And we're gonna repeat that till we get to the next chain space. And as usual, when we get to that chain space, we're gonna half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in that chain space. So I'm gonna repeat that string of instructions, and we're supposed to do that a total of four times. I've already done it once, so I'm gonna to continue to do that three more times until I get to the last chain space of the row. All right, so I've made it to that last chain space and I've worked into that last chain space. So now I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, all the way across until I have one stitch left. There's my last stitch. I'm gonna half double crochet in the last stitch. All right, so that is the end of row six. And now we're gonna go ahead and work row seven. So for row seven, I'm gonna chain two and turn half double crochet in the same stitch. Then I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop of the next stitch, half double crochet in the back loop, front loop, back loop, all the way to the next chain space. And now I'm going to half double crochet in the same stitch, half double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch. And then we're going to start our sequence of half double crochet in the front loop, half double crochet in the back loop, front loop, back loop, all the way to the next corner chain space. All right, and then I'm gonna half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in that chain space. So I'm gonna repeat that string of instructions of half double crochet in the front loop only, half double crochet in the back loop only, until I'm to the next corner chain space. Half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the chain space. I'm gonna do that a total of four times. I've already done it once. So I'm gonna do that three more times until I'm at the last corner chain space. All right, so here's that last corner chain space. So I'm going to continue repeating the little sequence of half double crochet in the front loop and then half double crochet in the back loop until I get to the last two stitches. 
And now that I'm down to the last two stitches, I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop of the next stitch and then a regular half double crochet in the last stitch. So that's the end of row seven. Now for the size that I'm making, I am supposed to repeat rows six to seven zero more times. So that means I'm not going to repeat them at all. And I'm just going to move on to row eight. So on row eight, what we're going to be doing is we're going to separate the sleeve sections from the fronts and the back. So we're going to be leaving an armhole here, but we're going to be working only across the fronts and the back. And this is what's going to join the piece together at the underarm on both sides so that we can finish working the body of the sweater and then do the sleeves later. So I'm going to chain two and turn for row eight here. I'm going to half double crochet in the same stitch. And now I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, across until I reach the next corner chain space. And now we are at the corner chain space. So I'm going to half double crochet in the corner chain space. But we're not going to chain one and then half double crochet in there again. What we're going to do instead is we're going to chain four. And then we're going to skip all the stitches along the next side of our piece and go to the next chain space, which is over here. So now I'm going to half double crochet in that corner chain space. So we're now going to repeat that sequence of instructions another time for a total of two times. So again, we're going to half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, all the way across till I get to the next corner chain space. All right, so I am up to the next chain space. I'm gonna half double crochet in the chain space, chain four, then I'm going to skip all the stitches along the next side of the piece and half double crochet in the next chain space over here. And now to finish out this row, we're going to half double crochet in the back loop and in the front loop, then in the back loop and in the front loop, all the way across to the end of my row till I have one stitch left. All right, here's the last stitch. We're going to do a regular half double crochet in the last stitch, and that's the end of row eight. So if you look at our piece right now, you can kind of see what we've done here. We've joined the fronts to the back at the underarm. So now when we work across, we're only going to be working the body of the sweater and not the sleeves. So for row nine, we're going to chain two and turn. We're going to work a regular half double crochet in the same stitch and half double crochet in the back loop of the next stitch. Then we're going to work a sequence of half double crochet in the front loop only and in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, half double crochet in the back loop only, across until I get to the next chain four space from the previous row. All right. There's the last half double crochet right there. The next thing we have to work into is four chain stitches. So I'm going to half double crochet in each of the next four chains. There we go. And again, we're going to repeat those instructions. Half double crochet in the front loop, in the back loop, in the front loop, in the back loop, all the way till we get to the next chain four space. All right, so I am all the way to that next chain space right here where we've chained four, and we're going to, again, half double crochet in each of these four chain stitches. There we go. And now all we have left is this final section of our row. So we're again going to half double crochet in the front loop, then in the back loop, front loop, back loop across and now we have two stitches left in the row I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop of the next stitch and then do a regular half double crochet in that last stitch all right so that is the end of row nine 
and that is the first row that we have made across all the body of the sweater portion. So this is what we've just done here. And now we're ready to move on to row 10. All right, so for row 10, I'm going to chain two and turn. Then I'm gonna work a half double crochet in the same stitch. And we are going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch, half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch, back loop only, front loop only, and we're going to repeat that little sequence all the way across our entire row until we get to the last stitch. All right, so I'm down to that last stitch and I'm gonna half double crochet in the last stitch. So that's the end of row 10. And what we're going to be doing next is we're going to continue repeating row 10 until the sweater body, which is this lower portion, is the length that we want. So the pattern says to repeat row 10 24 more times. And what that will do is that will bring our cardigan length down to about two inches less than what the finished length will be. Because at the end of this, we're still going to add a row of ribbing, a band of ribbing around the bottom edge, which will be two inches wide. So go ahead and repeat row 10 24 more times and then we will move on to the ribbing. All right, so here is our cardigan at this point. We've repeated row 10 24 more times and we are now to the length of the waffle stitch part of the cardigan. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to add some ribbing around this hem edge down here and that's going to finish off the length of our cardigan. So to do that, we're going to start by chaining 11, and we're going to skip the first chain and single crochet in the second chain from hook, and then we're gonna single crochet in the next nine chains. All right, so that is the end of row one, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working short rows that go this direction and joining it to the last row of the main portion of the cardigan body as we go. So for row two, we're gonna slip stitch in the next two stitches of the cardigan hem. So I'm gonna slip stitch here, slip stitch in the next stitch here, then we're gonna turn, and we're gonna skip those two slip stitches and single crochet in the back loop only of the next 10 stitches. And the reason we're working in the back loop only here is because it helps create a very narrow um, ribbing. Not narrow in the sense of how long it is as far as adding length to the hem, but narrow in the sense that the ribs in the ribbing are very closely spaced. So that's the end of row two. Now for row three, we're gonna chain one and turn. We're gonna single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and in the back loop only of the next nine stitches. And that is the end of row three. So now we're going to repeat rows two to three of the ribbing until we've worked all the way around the cardigan hem and we've reached the other side of the front, which will also be the other end of this last row that we're working into here. So I'm going to continue repeating rows two and three. Just for demonstration's sake, I'm gonna do it one more time. So I'm going to slip stitch for row two in the next two stitches of the cardigan, turn, single crochet in the back loop only of the single crochet stitches from the previous row. We're not working into those slip stitches. And again, chain one, turn, single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and in the next nine. And each time we turn to work the row two again, which is coming from the last row of the cardigan away, we will slip stitch in the next two stitches of the cardigan hem, turn, and then skip the two slip stitches and single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch across. And then again, chain one, turn, single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and in the back loop only of the next nine stitches. So that is how we are adding our ribbing. So we're just basically working 
single crochet back loop only single crochet rows along this direction and joining the ends of the rows to the hem edge of our cardigan. So this will add a little bit more length to our cardigan like so. And we're gonna continue doing this until we get all the way around and reach the other side of the cardigan front right here. All right, so here is our cardigan body at this point. We have the upper portion of the cardigan up here, and then now I have finished the ribbing around the hem. So now we're going to go ahead and tie off and we're ready to move on to the sleeves. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the back side of the last row that is around the sleeve opening right now is facing out. We want the back of that last row on the outside. If the back of your last row around this sleeve edge is not on the outside, then you'll need to flip your piece inside out so that it is on the outside. And the main reason we want to make sure that the back of that last row is on the outside is because we don't want to interrupt the rhythm of our stitch pattern. So by making sure that the back of that last row is on the outside, then we'll be able to continue with the stitch pattern without any break in the stitch pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this sleeve to do first. And what we're going to do is we're going to join new yarn down here at the underarm where we have this chain four space or chain four section going across the base of that sleeve opening. So I'm going to look at this chain four right here. We have upside down half double crochets at this underarm edge right here. So there are four chains that we made and worked into with those half double crochets. So I'm going to identify where those are at, which are right here. One, two, three, four, and I'm gonna join my new yarn in the third chain out of those four. So one, two, three. I'm gonna insert my hook into the base of that stitch, grab my new yarn, and pull up a loop. So next the pattern tells me to chain two. This is round one of the sleeve, and I'm gonna half double crochet in the same stitch that I just joined into like so, and half double crochet in the chain following the stitch that I just joined into. So what we've done is we've essentially started at the center of the underarm, worked into two of those chain stitches from that chain four, and then when we come around the other side, we'll work into the other two. So I'm also going to go ahead and crochet over my tail as I go so I don't have to weave it in later. And we're going to be working in rounds around the sleeve opening. So next I'm going to find the chain one space from the corner of the upper portion of the sweater, which would be the yoke. But if you can see right here where our raglan line goes, where we had that HDC chain one HDC or half double crochet chain one half double crochet into the corner each time, here is where that chain space is at the edge of the sleeve here. So I am going to half double crochet in that chain space. And now we can continue working around the rest of the sleeve, almost all the way around I should say, with the stitch pattern that we've been using. So now I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch then half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch around until I get to the other chain one space on the other side of the sleeve. So again, half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, and I'm going to continue repeating that back loop, front loop sequence until I get to the next chain one space of the sleeve opening. All right, so I've made it around to this next chain space right here. We are almost to the edge where we started and we are going to join the round right here. So right here is this chain space. I'm gonna half double crochet in the chain space and then I'm gonna come over here and half double crochet in the two chains at the underarm. So one half double crochet in the very first chain and then another half double crochet in the second chain. So that is the end of our round here. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to be joining our rounds of the sleeve with the invisible slip stitch. 
And what that's going to do is that's going to help make the join line where we have the starting chains and the slip stitches, it's going to make it blend in better so that you can't really see it. So for the invisible slip stitch, I'm going to stretch the loop on my hook, like so. Then I'm going to come over here to the very first half double crochet of the row and insert my hook into that stitch from back to front. Now I'm going to take this stretched loop, put it back on my hook, and pull it through from front to back. And that is the invisible slip stitch. So what we're going to be doing is because after each row of the rest of the cardigan, we turned the work, we're also going to be turning the work at the end of each sleeve round. So I'm going to turn my work to begin round two. Now I should also mention here that not all of the sizes use all of the rounds of the sleeve. So if you are making the size 4X or 5X, then you're going to skip round two and continue to round three. But for all the rest of the sizes, we're going to use round two. So for round two, I'm going to chain two and turn. I already turned. We're going to half double crochet in the front loop of the next stitch, half double crochet in the back loop of the next stitch, front loop of the next stitch, back loop of the next stitch, and we're going to continue doing that all the way around until we get back to the beginning. All right, there's my last stitch of the round, and it will kind of look like the chain two at the beginning is coming from the last stitch of the round. It's kind of attached to it. That's okay. You just want to make sure that you don't miss that last stitch just because it appears that the chain two is coming out of it. So again, we're going to join with that invisible slip stitch. I'm going to stretch the loop on my hook and let go of it. Insert my hook from back to front in the top of the first half double crochet of the round. Grab that loop and pull it through from front to back. So for the size that I'm making, I need to repeat round two 15 more times. If you are working the 4X or the 5X, you're skipping round two completely and going straight to round three, so you won't need to work it any times. But with the sizes that do use round two, you're going to need to check the pattern to make sure you repeat it the correct number of times for the size that you're making. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat round two 15 more times for the size that I'm making, and then we'll move on to round three. All right, so I finished repeating round two, and you can see I've got some length in my sleeve now. And now we're going to move on to round three. So for round three, I'm going to chain two and turn. And now I'm going to work a half double crochet two together. So to do that, I'm gonna yarn over. I'm gonna insert my hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. So now I should have five loops on my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through all five of those loops. So now I'm going to continue working our little stitch pattern around. I'm going to half double crochet in the front loop only of the next stitch, half double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch, front loop only, back loop only, till I have two stitches left in my round. All right, so I've got two stitches left in my round and I'm gonna work another half double crochet two together. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all five loops on the hook. So that's the end of round three. And I'm gonna join to the top of that first half double crochet two together with the invisible slip stitch. And now we're ready to turn and work round four. So for round four, I'm gonna chain two and turn. And now I'm going to half double crochet two together again. So that is the first stitch of our round. And then we're going to repeat a sequence of half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only, half double crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the front loop only. And I'm gonna continue doing that around until I have two stitches left in my round. All right, so that we are down to the last two stitches, and I'm gonna half double crochet two together again. And you can see how it looks like our chain two right here is pulling a little bit to the side, and that is because we are making these decreases. And again, I'm going to join with that invisible slip stitch. And the decreases are helping the sleeve get smaller so that when we get down to the cuff, that it will be kind of tapering down. 
So for the size that I'm making, I'm going to repeat rounds three to four three more times. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I will show you what we're going to do next. All right, so I finished repeating rounds three to four, and for the size that I'm making, I'm going to skip round five. So the pattern will tell you for some of the sizes to skip round five and continue to the cuff ribbing. But round five is very similar to what we just did, except it has more half double crochet two togethers in the round. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the cuff ribbing. So we're going to be working this very similarly to how we did the ribbing on the hem of the cardigan earlier. So I'm going to chain nine. And I'm gonna skip that first chain and single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And then I'm gonna single crochet in the next seven chains. And at this point we should have eight single crochets in our row, not including the beginning chain space. And we're now going to slip stitch for row two. We're gonna slip stitch in the next two stitches of the cuff and turn the work. Now we're going to skip those two slip stitches and then single crochet in the back loop only of the next eight stitches. There we go, that's the end of row two. And now I'm going to chain one and turn for row three. I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and single crochet in the back loop only of the next seven stitches. And that is the end of row three. So I'm going to continue repeating rows two to three until I've worked all the way around the sleeve cuff and I have reached the last stitch of the last round of the sleeve, which would be right here. So I'm just going to show that one more time. I'm going to, for row two, slip stitch in the next two stitches of the sleeve cuff, turn the work, single crochet in the back loop only of each single crochet from the row below, we're not working into those slip stitches. There we go. And I'm going to chain one and turn for row three, single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch, and in each of those single crochet stitches from the row below until we get back to the sleeve edge here. So I'm going to continue repeating those two rows until my ribbing goes all the way around the cuff. All right, so I've worked around this sleeve cuff here, and you can see that the last row that I worked was row two. And when I worked row two, the last stitch that I slip stitched into was the last stitch available on the edge of the sleeve. So now, since we do not have a gap here in between the first row of our ribbing and the last row, now we're ready to tie off. So I'm going to leave a tail for seaming and I'm going to cut the yarn. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just tie off that last loop on my hook. We're done with the hook for right now. And now I'm gonna grab a yarn needle. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch this little slit closed right here so that our cuff is connected together all the way around. So here's my yarn needle and I'm gonna go ahead and thread that yarn tail through it. And then here is our sleeve cuff. So because we are working with ribbing here, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the foundation edge of row one to the back loop only of this last row right here. So I'm gonna start by taking a stitch from one side and going through the other stitch on the other side for the last row. And then I'm just gonna pick up the chain edge of each stitch on row one and also stitch through the back loop of each stitch on row two. So by leaving the other loop of the edge of the last row, unstitched, it's going to continue um, that ribbing pattern. It's not going to be interrupted by our seam here. Now, this is going to be on the inside of the wrist, so it's not going to be super noticeable anyway, but it's the little details that you take the time to get them just right and get them looking neat and clean and tidy, and that really makes your finished project look its very best. So I am almost to the last stitch here. There's that last 
single crochet from the last row. There we are. And that is our finished seam at this point. So this blends in pretty well. All we need to do next is I'm just going to come under here, grab a couple strands of yarn at the end of my seam, wrap the yarn around the needle, and then pull the needle through to make a knot. So now I can just weave in this yarn tail. And I'm going to do that in a minute, but I just want to show you our finished sleeve real quick. All right, so that is the finished sleeve of this side of the cardigan. And now what I'm going to do after I weave in this yarn tail at the cuff, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same instructions for this sleeve at the other armhole on the other side of the cardigan. And then once we have both sleeves finished up, then we'll move on to the button band. All right, so I finished making both sleeves and the final step as far as the crochet goes in our cardigan is to crochet the button band. So we're going to be working a band of ribbing very similar to what we've worked on the cuffs and on the hem of the cardigan. And it's going to run up one side of the front, up the V-neck on one side, across the back of the neck, down the V-neck on the other side, and then down back to the hem. So first of all, you need to find the right front of the cardigan when worn. So laying flat on the table, this side is on the right, but when you put the cardigan on, this side is the left front when you're wearing it. So this side over here is the right front when the cardigan is worn. So when you put the cardigan on, this side right here will be on your right. And so this is the edge that we're going to join our new yarn at because this is the side that gets the buttonholes. So once you have identified the right front when worn, you're going to come down here to the very corner of the ribbing at the bottom. And this is where we're going to join our new yarn. So here's my yarn and I'm going to go ahead and find the very corner stitch right here of this ribbing. And then I'm going to pull up a loop. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 9, and now we're going to begin working a ribbing that is applied very similar to these other ribbings that we've already done, except we're going to be joining at first into the stitches of the ribbing down here, and then as we go up, we're going to be joining to the ends of the half double crochet rows along this front edge. So first I'm going to skip the first chain and single crochet in the second chain from my hook and then I'm going to single crochet in the next seven chain stitches. All right so I finished working those single crochet stitches and now we're going to slip stitch in the next two stitches of the ribbing which is actually the foundation edge where we begin our chain to bring the ribbing out from the existing cardigan hem. And as we work row two, what I'm going to do is bring the yarn tail over so that I can crochet over it. So now I'm going to skip those two slip stitches in the cardigan. And then we're going to single crochet in the back loop only of the next eight stitches. And again, I am crocheting over my yarn tail here so that I won't have to weave it in later. But you can weave it in the normal way if you prefer. All right, there is the end of row two. So for row three, I'm going to chain one and turn the work again. I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch the chain is coming from and in the back loop only of the next seven single crochets. All right, so what, now that we've finished row three, we're going to move on to row four. And row four is the row where we place a buttonhole. So what we're going to be doing for row four is we're going to slip stitch in the next two stitches of the ribbing on the cardigan right here and turn the work. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave this uh, yarn tail loose now and quit crocheting over it so that you can see what I'm doing a little better for this row. So I'm going to skip the two slip stitches that I just made and I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only of the next two stitches. So there's two single crochet in the back loop only. Now I'm going to chain three. I'm going to skip three and then I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only of the next three stitches. 
So that's the end of row four. You can see our buttonhole right here. And now we're going to turn and work row five by chaining one and turning. And then I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch, single crochet in the back loop only of the next two stitches. And then I'm going to single crochet in the three chain stitches that we made on the previous row. So I've got a single crochet into a chain, a second single crochet into a chain, and then a third single crochet into a chain. And then I'm going to single crochet in the back loop only of the next two stitches. So that's the end of row five. And you can see we've just made our first buttonhole here. And as we go up the cardigan front edge, we're going to be adding buttonholes as we go. So for the size that I'm making, the pattern says to repeat rows two to three, seven times, and then repeat rows four to five once. And I'm going to repeat that several more times after that. So as we work our way up, we're going to be adding more buttonholes, but our goal is to get the last buttonhole to end up right here at the base of the V-neck of our cardigan. So we want the last buttonhole to be right about here. And so to do that, we're going to be joining our rows of our ribbing and our button band. We're going to be joining those rows into the ends of all these half double crochet rows. And what will determine whether our buttons are spaced out in a way that ends up with the last one at the very top at the base of this v-neck what determines that is how far we space our single crochet rows compared to where we join them in the ends of the half double crochet rows. So if we join too many single crochet rows in the end of each half double crochet row from the cardigan, then our button band will not lay flat. It will instead flare out. So the button band will not be smooth. It will have one edge attached to this and the other edge will be flaring out because it's not attached to anything and that is not what we're going for. Now if we join too few single crochet rows to each half double crochet row in the cardigan, then our cardigan button band will actually shrink the edge because it will be pulling this edge like this, and we don't want that either. So what we're going for is we want to get our single crochet rows spaced out in such a way that they lay flat compared to the rest of the cardigan. So as we work up this cardigan front edge, I recommend joining two single crochet rows per row of half double crochet. So this is an area where that if you get to the top of your button band and it doesn't quite match where it's supposed to be at the v-neck, then you may need to unravel and try again to make sure that that button band lines up where it's supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and start working my button band part of the way up, and then I'll show you what that looks like as far as joining to those rows. Alright, so I'm almost up to my last buttonhole, but I just wanted to show you real quick how I'm slip stitching into the ends of these half double crochet rows. So I've just finished row three, and so what I have before me here is the end of a row and another end of the row. So as we are putting two single crochet rows per row of half double crochet, that just means that when we work our two slip stitches at the beginning of row two, we're working two slip stitches at the beginning of a row two into the end of this row, and then when we come back, we're going to work two slip stitches at the beginning of row two into the end of this row. So one handy place that you can put two slip stitches at the end of this row is in the chain, because this row has two chains on the edge. So I've worked two slip stitches into the end of one of these half double crochet rows, which will make both row two that we're working right now and row three be attached to the end of that row. All right, let's work row three to come back to the cardigan front edge. Here we are. So now we can put two of our slip stitches at the beginning of row two into the end of the next row. So I'm going to put a slip stitch. This is actually the upside down side of a half double crochet. I like to split that in half as I slip stitch into it. And I'm working two slip stitches into the end of that row. 
and then I can turn my work and then the row two that I'm about to work right now and the row three on the way back will it be attached to that row. So that's how we are putting two single crochet rows into the end of each half double crochet row. All right, so I am ready to work rows four and five for my final buttonhole. So even with row four, I'm still putting the two slip stitches at the beginning of row four into the end of one half double crochet row. Now we're gonna work row five to come back. And this will be the end of our row of buttonholes. And then we're gonna continue up around the back of the neck. All right, there's the end of row five. This is my last buttonhole, and I just wanted to lay this out for you real quick. So you can see that the top of this last row that I just worked, which is row five of the last buttonhole, it meets up with right about at the point where the V-neck stops, and then it turns and makes a straight edge down the front. So that is the buttonhole section of our button band, all finished. And now we're ready to move on up the front of the v-neck on the one side up to the back neck. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat rows two and three joining into this edge right here. We're gonna continue working up this edge repeating rows two and three until we reach the back corner on the side of the neck here. So this is the right front when worn and we're going to continue repeating rows two and three up the side of the neck past the um, beginning where we have the foundation edge here up to this point is working into the ends of the rows. Once we get to the foundation edge, we're going to be working into the stitches along the foundation edge. But we're going to stop repeating rows two and three when we're about an inch and a half away from this corner of the back neck on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and continue repeating rows two and three, and I'm going to stop when I have about an inch and a half left before the corner. All right, so I have finished repeating rows two and three until I am about an inch and a half away from this corner, and you want to make sure that you're ending with row three when you stop. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this corner because we want our ribbing to lay smooth and flat around the back of the neck. And to do that, it needs to kind of curve with this neckline edge here. So we're going to do that by working rows six and seven from this point right here, an inch and a half before the corner. And we're going to continue working rows six and seven until we're about an inch and a half past the corner. So for row six, it's very similar to row two, but instead we're going to slip stitch in the next three stitches of the neck edge, the foundation edge of the neck, instead of two stitches. So I've slip stitch in three, the next three stitches along this edge here, and then we're going to turn as usual skip the slip stitches and work a back loop only single crochet in each of the next eight stitches. And then for row seven, we're gonna chain one and turn. And this row is basically just like row three. We're gonna single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and single crochet in the back loop only of the next seven stitches. So now we're going to, again for row six, slip stitch in the next three stitches along this neck edge, which is the edge that we created with the foundation single crochet at the very beginning. And this makes it a lot easier to work into because we're not working into the base of little tight chain stitches. So again, we're gonna turn, skip the slip stitches, and single crochet in the back loop only of the next eight stitches. And then again, we're gonna work row seven, chain one and turn and single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and in the next seven stitches. All right, so I'm gonna continue repeating rows six to seven until I have worked about an inch and a half past this corner right here. And then we will move on to the next section. All right, so I finished repeating rows six and seven until I'm about an inch and a half past the corner. Here's the corner right here. And you can see how that ribbing is kind of curving gradually around that corner. 
It's not a sharp corner, but it is enough of a corner that we need to make our ribbing curve with it. So what we're going to do next, it's kind of hard to lay this neckline flat because it already has the sleeves and everything assembled. But what we're going to do is we're going to repeat rows two and three. Here's the next corner, the other side of the neckline, the back neckline. So this is our next corner and we're going to continue repeating rows two and three now until we're an inch and a half before this corner over here. And then once we get to the place where we're an inch and a half before the corner, then we're going to repeat rows six and seven and work row six and seven until we are an inch and a half past the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I have finished repeating rows six to seven and my current row is about an inch and a half past the corner if you're looking just at the edge. So our final step in our button band is to continue repeating rows two and three until we have worked this ribbing down the V-neck and all the way down the left front edge to this bottom corner right here. And right now it might not look like there's room for another band of ribbing on this side, but what is actually going to happen here is that the band of ribbing we're about to work down the left front edge when worn, the left front when worn, that band of ribbing is going to be overlapped by the side with the buttonholes on it. So I'm going to go ahead and continue that ribbing with rows two and three, repeating rows two and three, all the way down the left front edge until I reach the bottom corner of the left front, and then it will tie off. All right, so I have finished working rows two to three and followed the edge of the left front of the cardigan when worn all the way down to the bottom. And you can see I have a square edge here that is even. You wanna keep working until your last row is even with the ribbing at the bottom. So now that I have finished those rows and actually the last row that I worked was row three. If your last row is row two, then that's fine, you can tie off over here. But if your last row is row three, you'll want to work a slip stitch, a final single slip stitch into this ribbing edge right here to secure. And now that we have finished our ribbing along this edge, we can leave a tail and cut the yarn, and then we can tie off. So what I'm going to do to finish this up is I'm going to weave in my yarn tails here any remaining yarn tails, you're going to weave them in at this point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to block our cardigan. So blocking is a way of getting the finished fabric to relax and lay the way that it's supposed to. And it just helps the finished item look a lot neater. So my yarn is made primarily of acrylic. And so I'm going to go ahead and steam block my cardigan. Now, if you're using a yarn that has a different fiber content, if it's mostly natural fiber, then you might want to wet block or spray block your finished piece. But since my yarn is mostly acrylic, I'm gonna steam block. And if you're not familiar with any of those methods, I have a video in the description box down below. I will link it there. And if you're not familiar with any of those techniques, I have a video on blocking showing how to block both natural fibers and acrylics. If you want to go check that out, I will link that down below as well. So I'm going to go ahead and weave in my ends and steam block my cardigan, and then we'll be ready to sew on the buttons for our final step. All right, so my cardigan is blocked and it is ready for buttons. So what I have here is I have the cardigan laying flat with the button bands overlapping. And by the way, it's kind of better that you don't do this part in your lap. It's best to put this on a flat surface because if it's not on a flat surface, then that can distort how you end up lining up your buttons. So I recommend putting your cardigan on a flat surface and I have the button bands overlapping so that the band with the buttonholes in it is on the top. And you also want to make sure that when you line this up, you want the edge of your top button band to lay directly aligned with the edge on the underneath button band where it joins to the body of the cardigan. So once you have your button bands all lined up, you're going to need your buttons and you're going to need your yarn needle. Now for this, I am using a thin yarn needle that of course has a large enough eye that you can get the thicker yarn through there, but it has to be able to fit through 
the holes in your buttons. So because we're using large buttons for this project, um, most buttons of this size will have holes large enough for a yarn needle. But if for some reason the buttons that you're using do not have holes large enough for a yarn needle, then you could use a hand sewing needle and thread. But since these do, and since most buttons this large do have big enough holes for a yarn needle that is pretty thin, I'm going to go ahead and use this one. Now I'm going to be using separate lengths of yarn for each button. So I have just a length of scrap yarn here left over from my cardigan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the top and bottom buttons first, and then the one in the center and the ones in between. Now if you're doing one of the larger sizes, then you will not have a center buttonhole, but you will have an even number of buttons. Either way, you'll want to do the top and bottom first, and then the ones in the center, and then the ones in between, the center and the top, and the center and the bottom. So I have one of my buttons here, and what I'm going to do is, since I have my button bands lined up right here, I'm going to take my finger and put it through the buttonhole to mark where I want the button to go. And then when I lift up with my first button band, if I lift that up, I can see where the button needs to be stitched on the other button band on the underside. So then I can very carefully center my button in that spot. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch it on with my yarn needle. So what I like to do with this type of button is I like to do kind of an X stitch and I'm also going to leave a tail, somewhat of a tail of my um, button sewing yarn. And that is so that when I get finished, I can go ahead and tie that off. So I am preferring to line up my buttons so that the button stitches are making kind of a plus sign or an X, but so that it is angled. All right, so I'm doing two or three stitches per direction because I want the uh, button to be secure, but I also don't want to overfill the holes in the button with the yarn. So there's one direction, then I'm going to come back and go the other direction with my stitching. and do a couple of stitches this way. And of course, if your button only has two holes, then just stitch it down however you like. And that is pretty secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop there, and then I'm gonna turn it over and take the yarn tail that I started with and the yarn that's attached to my needle, and I'm gonna tie that in a double knot. And then I can go ahead and weave in those tails. But if we lay this out flat again, and we button that top button, then you can see how that looks when the cardigan is closed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again down here at the bottom of the cardigan. I'm going to line up the button bands like so, and stick my finger through the buttonhole to mark where I want the center of the button to be lined up, and then I will place my button accordingly. So we're going to keep doing that pretty much until we have all the buttons sewn on. Like I said, starting with the top and bottom, and then I'm going to do the center button and then the ones in between. All right, so I've got all my buttons sewn on and they're evenly spaced along the underlapping button band. And now my cardigan is finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.